best part. This coonskin and cap and I have been together for a long time. You may recall I played Davy Crockett in movies and for television. Davy was a heroic individual, a citizen soldier who gave his life at the Alamo. Kelly Tower, this is U-Haul 1. All right, to U-Haul 1, Kelly Tower. U-Haul 1 is 15 miles from the outer marker. Over a century and a half ago, the Alamo was the site of the struggle for freedom as Davy and 188 brave men fought off thousands of Mexican regulars to give Sam Houston time to build and train an army. Most of the men on the Texan side were volunteers. They're remembered most because they stood and fought when they didn't have to. They gave their lives by choice because of their dedication to the ideal that all men should be free. That fine tradition is still very much alive today. Kelly Tower, U R one is now approaching the outer marker. Roger, U R one. This is Kelly Tower. Continue approach. You are cleared to land. Today's citizen soldiers have traded in their flintlock rifles for more modern weapons, but they still serve by choice. They are still dedicated to freedom, and no better example can be found than the Air Force Reserve's Alamo Wing. sense that's what they were in the beginning their mission was ill-defined and recruiting was an initial challenge when one particular unit was organized in september 1951 that unit which became known as the alamo wing began its operation at brooks field in san antonio in mid-1960 the wing took its newly acquired c-119s to a new location Kelly Air Force Base on the southwest side of San Antonio. It was a small move, only nine miles from Brooks Field, but a big step forward for the Alamo Wing. The move to Kelly meant expanded facilities and closer ties with one of the Air Force's more active flying installations. One of the biggest tests for the unit came in the summer of 1961 at North Field, South Carolina. The Alamo Wing was one of the six wings selected for Operation Swift Strike the largest military exercise held outside a military reservation since the historic Louisiana Maneuvers of 1941. Approximately 10,000 Army personnel were supported by 400 troop carrier and fighter aircraft during the exercise. Responsibility and in 1971 came a new aircraft. It was a modern turboprop four-engine transport nicknamed the Hercules, the C-130B. For the first time, the Air Force Reserve was assigned frontline aircraft capable of meeting the performance standards set by the active forces. Now, true integration with regular Air Force flying units would begin and soon become commonplace. Some brush fires. 433rd had a lot in common with the volunteer fire department. And uh, they developed the system for the C-130 that consisted of uh, 2,400 gallons in four different pallets with a 20-inch pipe that extended out the, the rear of the aircraft on each side. And uh, when the, the fires would be, uh, would require attention out in California, uh, they'd load up this uh, unit slid right into the airplane. And uh, they'd go out and they could offload the 2,400 gallons in six seconds. It was an exciting mission in that you, normally the fires were down in the canyons and uh, in places that were pretty hard to get to. Uh, you'd come over the top of the hill with, uh, with your uh, uh, load, uh, dive down 150 feet off the ground, and uh, just uh, before you reached the area where the fire was, you'd pull up and release the retardant. And uh, it was really exciting to fly one of those missions. So beginning in 1978, 
The C-130's versatility allowed the Alamo Wing and other reserve and air guard units to begin supporting Southern Command requirements all over Latin America. And now I'd like to show you the finest airlifter in the inventory, the Cadillac of the Air Force. Well, the first thing you notice, it's big. It's way over 200 feet long. It's about six and a half stories high. And some bright guy figured out you can stash 13 million ping pong balls in it. In other words, there's an awful lot of space back there, which keeps the loadmaster plenty busy. Space that can be filled with badly needed equipment should an armed conflict break out in some remote part of the world. The C-5 can carry tanks, artillery, helicopters, and even the Army's 74-ton mobile scissors bridge. It'll carry more than 100 tons of equipment, well over 3,000 miles at about 500 miles an hour. With aerial refueling, it can go to any part of the globe, Hawaii, Japan, Europe, and the Middle East. And when it gets there, it can land on a strip less than 5,000 feet long and it's 28 feet. About those four massive engines, each turbofan engine is about 27 feet long and has an air intake diameter of more than eight and a half feet. It's big. It's useful. It's the heart of strategic area. Of many players whose combined efforts have resulted in a number of firsts for the 433rd. The first reserve unit to win an outstanding unit award. And also the first to win it three times. The first unit to have its commander become chief of the Air Force Reserve. And now, three former Alamo Wing members have held the position of chief. The first reserve outfit to receive the frontline C-130B aircraft. And of course, the first reserve wing to fly the C-5 Galaxy. These are only some of the many, many firsts for the wing. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died. The success of this organization has resulted from the dedication and hard work of its members, who have been blessed throughout the years with strong and capable leadership. And it totally rings in our hearts for appreciation for the great lads that have done so much to make it a viable force. I would recommend the Air Force Reserve as a career for young ladies. I think it's a great way to go.